Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I want to talk about the main changes of the PvE meta that came along with the patch 1.12 applied previous DLC release. There are a lot of changes, but I will only talk about the most important features of the new patch. The most important one that I consider is life-changing in terms of meta is that we are receiving an increase on dexterity scaling when applying Ashes of War that scales with dexterity, or in a weapon that scales with dexterity. For instance, I have three main weapons here, each one of them with a different Ash of War applied, both what all of these Ashes of War have in common is that every single one is benefited by dexterity directly. The Ice Pierce deals purely magic damage, but it's benefited because of the dexterity projectile scaling, as well with the Storm Blade, and in the same way with Blood Blade, which means that every Ash of War that is related with projectiles or any Ash of War that scales with, this, with dexterity will be highly benefited by this new change. Also, I don't know if they, if they change the speed of this Ash of War, but I feel like it's a little bit slower, I don't know why. Yeah, as you can see, we are dealing 3k damage. We are dealing a lot of damage without using any buff yet. That's because of the high scaling on dexterity of this weapon. 871 with 80 on dexterity, 85 because of my Millicent's prosthesis. But yeah, we are dealing a lot of damage without using any buff just because of this change. The same will happen with the Storm Blade. Let's test it out. Now, the cool part of this uh, Ash of War. Is that it is? Oh my god, that's a lot of damage, guys. That is a lot of damage. The cool part of the Flamberge is that it's a great sword. It's one of the few great swords that scales mostly with dexterity than with other stats. This great sword will scale A with dexterity, and of course, the Storm Blade Ash of War will be highly benefited by this new change. And it will work with any skill that is related with projectiles or with the dexterity scaling. Of course, this will be better with Ashes of War that are related with projectiles, because previous this patch, the projectile Ashes of War were benefited by dexterity even when in the game this was not established in any rule. It wasn't a glitch or something like that, it was just a, a hidden feature if we can call it that way. Now imagine what we can do with three main weapons that scales A with dexterity and that have applied a projectile related Ash of War. This is going to be life changing especially because they nerfed a lot of the other weapons that were meta. The important part here is that it's not necessary to use a projectile related Ash of War. You can use any Ash of War and if your weapon is on the keen affinity it will be benefited as well. But this buff will be more important or more relevant in projected related ashes of war because previous patch they have already this feature so now that that's been buffed it is going to be even greater if you don't want to farm runes or materials for your elden ring builds mmo exp is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price use my code carlosen to get a five percent discount on your purchases thanks mmo exp for sponsoring today's video now the most important thing here is that the build that i showed you previously is not going to change at all the build is still as powerful as it was, but now, instead of using the Bloodhound's Fang, I will be using the Guardian's Keep Sword Spear, because now this skill is way more powerful than the Bloodhound's Fang. But that doesn't mean that Bloodhound's Fang is not as good as it was previously. The thing is that now the Guardian Skin Sword Spear is a lot better now because of that dexterity boost. But yeah, the, the thing is that the build we craft is perfect to enter this DLC. And I'm just waiting a few hours to uh, start playing that thing. So let's, let's, let's go quickly with the rest of the changes. And the second change is perfect for people that likes to play with axes, with great axes, with hammers, flays, or with sights. Now the main change is that these type of weapons have an increase on the speed of attack. So yeah, we have a significant speed boost on the attacks of this weapon. This is so crazy. This is quite crazy because it can be benefited by continuous attack talismans like the Millicent's Prosthesis or the Rodent Wings or Insignia. Look at how fast this axe is. This is even faster than the Wild Strikes as of War, or is, or is the same speed? No, it's faster. I am not a guy of axes or great axes, but this might uh, this might be interesting to, to try. Hammers as well are going to be really fast. It can be perceived so much as it can be with the with the axes. I actually don't play enough with this uh, type of weapon, so I can't uh, tell the difference. But the axes version is quite uh, noticeable, bro. But what I think is more important is that for axes, great axes, and some colossal weapons, we are going to have an increase of damage with the heavy attacks. Especially the axe version is going to be the most important because it's the perfect balance between high speed and high stance damage. It's like hammers. So this is going to stack incredibly good with the axe talisman and the spike crack tier. 
here in case you enjoy that type of gameplay i really like that type of gameplay but as the dlc is coming out i, I don't have enough time to test a run with that build you know but uh, let's say that that's an important change that i really care about a lot now let's start with this specific change they buff the summer corp sword i think they increase the damage of the weapon itself not the not the skill and they increase the range of some attacks as well i don't i don't know how they can change that but they did i have a complete video of this sword and it's quite decent it's very underrated if it was already powerful with the right build i guess it's going to be great now let's see if the skill feels different I, I, I don't feel like the skill feels different, but let's do a crit attack on this guy and according to what I remember... What?! I, I guess that's because of that crit attack, dude. I don't think they buffed, they, they buffed the weapon that much, you know? Okay, let's, let's check the, the moveset. Okay, it's really strong. Okay, it's a... Very, very decent uh, buff, I guess. I can tell because I am playing right now with a weak enemy. I cannot compare it exactly or precise be because I was using the, fu the full buff routine. I was using different stats on the previous build where I tested this weapon. But as as, as we can see with those guys, it, it is quite decent. They increase the attribute scaling of the Claw Mark Seal and the Dragon Communion Seal. This this change will be very important for our Dragon build or Dragon Samurai build where we use all Dragon Communion incantations. And around the Claw Mark Seal, this is perfect for a Strength Fate build. When you're using a strength and fate, the claw mark seal is your best option. And now that we have a buff in this aspect, that build is going to be more reliable in the future as soon as people start realizing how good it is going to be. It's all about testing. I can tell you guys if it is good or if it's not good enough, but I am just addressing the, the points that they are changing. And for some reason, they also decided to nerf Terra Magica as well. That is absolutely insane, guys. It was a very useful tool if you were uh, using magic uh, damage, uh, magic based weapons if you were using intelligence builds that thing was crazy and now they they nerfed it i i can i can tell you exactly how much but it they decreased the effect of that buff for the blasphemous blade they reduced the stance damage of the of the wave when using the the skill they reduced the stance damage that that flame part does also they reduced the knockdown effect that the flame part does. I actually don't know what what does that mean. I guess it's uh, the stagger uh, the enemies receive from f when being hit with that part of the weapon or with the skill. I, I mean, I don't I don't feel like this is going to be very significant. That you are actually aware of what you are doing because they didn't remove the heal part, which is the most important aspect of this weapon. But yeah, certainly this is going to change a little bit how effective the weapon is, especially when you depend a lot on stance damage like myself. Now with the Darkmoon Grazer is most likely the same, it's just poise damage, stance damage uh, balance. It is not a nerf completely, it's mostly a change. They reduced the stance damage of the projectile part and they increased the uh, stance damage that you deal when connecting those heavy attacks with the target, with the sword. This is perfect for close quarter players like myself. But for people that actually enjoyed the playing at long range with this weapon, that is not going to be that good in terms of stance damage. They didn't mention anything at all about the nerfing the damage of the weapon, but it is going to be affected if you used to cast a magicka with this build. With the magma blade, it's the same case. This weapon is great because when you when you spam the skill, you will you will most likely break the stance of your enemies, which will help you to keep spamming the attacks as much as you wish. And probably the saddest nerf here is the Bloodbone Ritual. This skill is going to take more to build up the bleed status effect. Now we are going to be dealing only the fire damage until we manage to build up bleed completely. And that's quite sad because the skill is really, really dangerous because you expose yourself a lot when using this skill. And sadly, they also nerfed Thundercloud form this one was one of my favorite skills because you were able to deal a lot of stance damage i will consider this weapon meta because it will allow you to stone lock your enemies and make the game easier for you but now you can't uh, but now it's going to be different they nerfed as well contagious fury they nerfed the jellyfish shield that's quite sad it says decrease the amount of attack power generated by this skill so so it's quite sad that they also nerfed the jellyfish shield it was a very useful skill that was perfectly combined with the dark moon gray sword so after all they really really nerfed so bad the dark moon gray sword because they nerfed terra magica and they just nerfed jellyfish shield so it's quite sad because this weapon is not going to be as powerful as it was anymore and yeah guys those were the main changes for the pbe meta there are a lot of other changes that are not really important for example you can 
news now torrent on the Elden Beast fight. I don't think it is important if you actually know how to play that boss fight, but if you struggle a lot with that thing when the Elden Beast flies around the arena entirely, then that new feature might be useful for you. But to me, it's like, I, I don't care about that, dude. I'm not saying that I am, oh, I am a really good player, but I actually learned how to deal with the Elden Beast now. So that is a minor update for from my point of view, but maybe for you guys, it's a little bit useful as well. So after all, we can say that they both the build that I am going to use for the DLC, that is crazy. Crazy, because now we have a better dexterity scaling on the skills on the Ash of Wars that were applied with King Affinity or with this or that have dexterity scaling. The full build is going to be in this video that you are watching right now on the end screen. Go watch it right here. The builds explained on detail if you want to use it because they nerf your weapons, bro. <laughs> have a great day, guys. My name is Carlos, and I'll see you in the next one.